I ate one avocado per day for a month and I noticed huge changes in my life to the point where I now do it every day. This was about two years ago that I started doing that. And now it's a non-negotiable for me. I just, I have an avocado every day. If I can't get my hands on avocado, I have some guacamole. And yeah, there's gonna be days that I miss, but the bottom line is it's just part of my life. It's drilled into my head. Now, what did I recognize? What did I realize and what did I notice? Well, I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna share what you would notice more than likely, but also gonna back it up with some research. So let's go ahead and dive in. After today's video, I popped the link down below for LMNT electrolytes, Element Electrolytes. So no matter what kind of dietary protocol you're doing or if you're exercising, obviously electrolytes are important. But down below, you can get a free variety pack of Element Electrolytes with any purchase. So it's an exclusive deal for those that watch my videos. So they have all kinds of flavors. They have citrus salt, which is kind of my go-to. They've got mango chili, lemon habanero, plain unflavored. It's awesome. They've got chocolate salt that you can mix with hot water so you can get your electrolytes, your sodium, your potassium, your magnesium in a delicious form. So that link is down below. It's drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. So check them out after this video, that link down below. Trust me, it's a delicious way to fight off cravings and to have something to sip on that's zero calorie or very minimal calorie throughout the course of the day. One of the things that you'd notice eating an avocado per day literally within hours is you might notice less inflammation. Now, what does that feel like? Now, inflammation is a natural thing, but when it becomes an ongoing issue, it can make you feel fatigued, make you feel foggy. It can make your joints feel cruddy. It can make your brain feel like it's just not working. It can inhibit recovery if it goes too far. It's a problem. So with this, we look at a study published in Food and Function, which painted it so clearly that it happens so fast with avocado. They had two groups of people eat burgers, a 250 gram burger patty or a 250 gram burger patty with 68 grams of avocado. What they found was unbelievable. Within two hours, the group that had only the burger patty started having vasoconstriction. They started having uh, their blood vessels started to constrict. Okay, at three hours, the group that had the burger only started having uh, this activation of what's called nuclear factor kappa B, which is sort of a master regulatory switch of inflammation. When that switch is on at sort of a genetic level, you're initiating this cascade of inflammatory cytokines and other things that are in that category. After four hours, there was a bona fide activation of interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is a very potent inflammatory cytokine, the one that is elevated after a workout where there's trauma, in certain stressors, after alcohol, Okay, this happened in the burger patty group. All of this was nullified if the avocado was in the situation. So the burger patty plus avocado did not have any of these situations. No vasoconstriction, no interleukin-6, no nuclear factor kappa B. What does it tell us? Does it tell us burger patties are bad? No, it tells us avocados are potent and it happens fast. So that's one of the first things that you can notice if you're in tune with your body, but it's happening either way in the background. The next thing that you might notice after a few days, and this is something I, I noticed within one day, was I was more focused. So I started doing some digging and trying to figure out what was potentially going on here. And I did find a paper that was published in the journal uh, Psychophysiology, it was very interesting. So in this study, they had one group eat a meal plus one full Haas avocado. And then the other group ate a full meal, a control meal, isocaloric, same amount of calories, but minus the Haas avocado. They found that the avocado group had an increase in what was called attentional inhibition. Attentional inhibition basically means that they could fight off distraction. They were able to focus on the task at hand, literally being more focused. Now, this study was a longer study over the course of 12 weeks, but in order to make these measurable changes on paper, it would take some time. Again, I'm very in tune with my body and what I do for a living requires me to be mentally astute. And I noticed it. Like with avocados in the picture, I'm like, wow, why is this such good brain food? So what's going on here? Well, there's other studies like one in Frontiers in Nutrition that found that older people that ate more avocados had much less instance of cognitive decline. We could look at the monounsaturated fatty acids as being like an anti-inflammatory, that kind of makes sense, but it probably has more to do 
with the major, major antioxidant components of avocados. It just makes sense. And we'll talk more about it with some of these other things. But we do have to recognize that there was a study that did look at monounsaturated fats and found in this particular study for what they looked at, monounsaturated fats were the only fat that were associated with a reduction in cognitive decline. So what that means is like longer term, avocados very well might help stave off cognitive decline. But in the short term, you literally might get more focus. Not necessarily brain energy, but more ability to fight off these distractions, which is wild. Now, after about a week, I noticed a big improvement in my mood. Now, that being said, the avocados were making it so that I was less hungry and I, I feel like I was eating less like potential junk anyway, but I did notice a big change in my mood. But I struggled with this because I know deep down that like fats don't fuel the brain. Like the brain can't run on fatty acids. They can't enter the blood brain barrier. And unless I was in a state of ketosis where I was depriving carbs so much that I was producing ketones, then I didn't really have an explanation. Until I dug into the research and I realized that, wow, I probably was deficient in folate. Avocados have a lot of folate. And what happens is folate ends up breaking down homocysteine. When homocysteine is elevated, especially in the brain, it inhibits the amount of circulation and nutrient delivery to the cells within the brain. So elevated homocysteine will lead to your brain not really working very well. Because folate breaks down homocysteine, it sort of liberates that. It increases the circulation and energy to the brain. When this happens, you have a reduction in neuroinflammation, and this is very closely tied with mood. Inflammation in the brain can definitely impact your mood. There was a study published in Journal of Psychiatric Research that demonstrated that subjects that had low levels of folate in their diet had higher instances of depression. Pretty correlational, so we can't take it to the bank, but it all starts to add up when we look at these things. Now I'm gonna jump ahead for a little bit because people might say, well, avocados have fat in them. They can't be that good for you if you have too much of that. There was a study that demonstrated that within like four or five weeks, there was a massive shift in LDL levels. Now, why do I mention this? Well, I predominantly follow a relatively low carb diet, so I don't worry too much about my LDL levels because sometimes they'll be elevated, sometimes they won't be. But what I do notice is that when I am really training hard and exercising a lot and I'm under a lot of stress, my oxidized LDL tends to go up. And oxidized LDL is the LDL cholesterol that has been acted upon by oxidative stress. That is when it becomes a problem and potentially dangerous. And that number for me would sometimes elevate. I noticed within two or three weeks that my LDL levels improved in total, but particularly my oxidized LDL, which is interesting because there was a study that looked at just this too. This study was published in the journal Nutrition. It was a five-week study. They had subjects consume three types of meals, okay? There was a low-fat meal, a moderate fat meal that had one avocado per day, and another moderate fat meal that didn't have the avocado but replaced those calories with oleic acid. So they were getting fats, so it was still equal amount of fats, and a good fat, oleic acid, but it wasn't the actual avocado. They found that within that five-week period, oxidized LDL levels dropped significantly. Oxidized LDL is one of the biggest problems. That is the LDL that's the real problem. We could go hem and ha about various particle sizes, light, fluffy, VLDL. We could go until we're blue in the face on good, bad, ugly. Oxidized LDL, we all tend to agree, that is more of a marker of inflammatory responses within the body, and that went down. And subsequently, they saw an increase in lutein levels. Lutein is a powerful free radical scavenger. So avocados drove up the body's lutein levels, which probably drove down that oxidized LDL. That is fascinating. You can notice that within weeks. Now, towards the end of 30 days with avocado, you might notice a little bit less of a pot belly. It's hard to notice because unless your calories are low and you're really reducing weight, you might not notice it super visually. But I'm confident that if you were to continue it on for a while, you'd notice it more. And that's not just me talking. Now, this isn't something that I experienced. My visceral fat was already low when I was doing this experiment, but it's still interesting because I've talked to other people that noticed that avocado has changed their life. Now, before I mention this, it's important to note that there was another study that demonstrated that avocado, having it daily, increased levels of CCK, increased levels of PYY, and increased glucagon-like peptide 1. Well, what are these things? These are gut incretins that signal to the brain to tell us to not be as hungry. So full disclaimer, 
Maybe the reductions in pot belly that you see from avocado are a result of you not being as hungry. That is absolutely viable. But when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, there seems to be more. There was a study published in Current Developments in Nutrition. They had people eat one avocado per day or an isocaloric control diet. So same amount of calories, but without the avocado. What they found is at the end of this study, the ratio of visceral fat to subcutaneous fat was lower, meaning they lost visceral fat and they didn't gain subcutaneous fat. As a matter of fact, they lost sub-Q belly fat too, but the ratio, the rate at which they lost visceral fat was much higher in the avocado group than the isocaloric control group, telling us that the avocado is doing something. What is it? The best explanation is again, the anti-inflammatory antioxidant component. Visceral fat is much more metabolic and related to inflammation and oxidative stress than it is just excess calories. So when you have a lot of oxidative stress and damage, it can manifest through storage of excess calories and fat into that visceral region, which only triggers a cascade of more inflammation, more oxidative damage, and a vicious circle that continues to grow that pot belly. So with that, reductions in visceral fat is something that could be a huge advantage to just adding one avocado per day to your life. Now, I know this video has just been a lot of crazy nuancey stuff, but the bottom line is that avocados are going to make you eat less. They're a good form of fat that are gonna keep you satiated. They're a good source of antioxidants that are gonna keep you feeling vibrant and feeling young and feeling fresh. And I, even though there's quite a few calories in an avocado, I think by replacing just one of your novelty foods per day with an avocado or a half an avocado is going to net you a tremendous benefit. So as always, keep it locked here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.